The Kicker Key 180.4. Came out a couple years ago. It's an exceptional amplifier with a built-in EQ and DSP. Inside you have this super compact four channel amplifier that has 45 watts by four of power. It can be front and rear or active front stage, meaning you can put a set of tweeters or mid-range little guys up on the front and a mid bass in the door. And it's easy to set up with a bunch of dip switches here on the side. It also comes with a mic to do the actual EQ. It listens to what's playing in the car and that's how it sets itself up. This was a lot of fun and it was an awesome amplifier. However, Kicker replaced it this year with the new 200.4, which is a lot easier to say than 180.4. This one is 50 by four, so it's not that much more power. However, it's a more efficient way to build the amplifier. They tweaked some internals and it got five more watts of power out of it. And supposedly it sounds better. It's also now stop start compliant. And that's what we're gonna do here today is we have the 180.4, we have a 200.4, we have one installed the car, we're gonna listen to it and then we're gonna swap it out for this, see how much better it sounds. But before we do that, let's open this up and see what comes in the box. Inside the box, Top piece of foam. If you have problems, stop. Please do not return products to store. Call Kicker Tech Support. The quick start guide. This is just a quick start guide. There is a full big owner's manual that you can download if you scan the QR code. But this is enough to get you started and get it in the car. It has the whole programming process that it needs all outlined on here. The amplifier, the auto setup microphone, and a bag of parts. Inside you have the main wiring harness. For power, this really only needs like a 12 gauge and it does have a fuse for one inside with a 20 amp fuse. You have your high level, low level plug. These RCAs can be easily removed and you can hook a factory radio directly up to this or if you have an aftermarket radio, you can plug RCAs directly into these. This black strap here is to hold the microphone in place. It comes with two zip ties and four screws. If you compare the 180.4 to the 200 by four, they're exactly the same size. Remember, this improvement is for efficiency of the amplifier. They didn't have to change anything physically in order to do it. It's all done on the circuit board itself. On the end of the amplifier you have a bunch of dip switches. Some of them in the on position will do what you want them to do. Some of them you will have to activate. The first one is auto turn on on. You have the option for 12 volts or DC offset. The factory position is 12 volts. Next is fader. Fader you would want on if you're going to be using this for front and rear. If you're going to be using it for front stage only, make sure the fader is off. It comes in the on position. Compression. Compression is used for high volume listening. Turn it on on and off and see if it works for what you're trying to listen to. There's no right or wrong answer for that. Default is off. Bi amp mode is next. Bi amp mode is used for when you're doing front stage only. So if you're gonna do those tweeters or small mid range in the dash and a mid bass in the door. Default is off. Kicker EQ, time delay. If you wanna experience what this will do to your sound, create a center image and make things sound up on the dash and very live like. Default on both EQ and time delay is engaged, meaning they're both on. All these things can be turned on and off after the auto setup is done. The last two switches here, which are your high pass crossover. A combination of these two switches are going to give you either 60, 80, or 120 hertz. For the front tweeter or mid-range output when in bi amped mode, it'll automatically sense what the crossover should be set to when it's doing its auto setup through the headphone. So make sure you do that before you start jamming on it. Coming down on the amplifier, you see two yellow lights here and here. These are your limiters. This has a form of distortion detection built into it and adjusting the gains here and here will allow you to set that up accurately. Down in the corner where it says radio detect, this is a load resistor built into it if your radio requires one. It comes default off. If you need it on, you need a small screwdriver to push it in. Your microphone will plug in here. This plug here is for your input, both high level and low level. On the other side of the amplifier, you have your red protect light and your green power light. This is also where your main power harness and output speakers are going to go. Now that we have an idea of the switches on the side of the amplifier, I'm going to set this up. I want my EQ on along with my time alignment. Bi amp mode is going to be off. Compressor, I believe is on in the vehicle now. Fader is in the on position and we're using DC offset to turn on. 
We're fairly intimate with how this vehicle sounds. It's Haley's car, so I've driven it quite a bit. I'm pretty impressed with how it is. So I'm really anxious to get in here and drop it in. This is the previous 180.4 installed with the KS components. I have to pull these four screws, unplug these two harnesses. Just in case you were wondering, yes, the harness for both models is exactly the same. Before we put the seat back down, plug in the microphone. Now like us, if you're gonna be mounting your amplifier up underneath the seat or any place in the car where it requires you to move the seat, take measurements so that you can put the seat back in the exact same way it was. You want the seat to be in the position that the driver is in when he's driving. Grab your black strap and weave the microphone through the strap so that you end up with something that looks like this. This is the top of the microphone. You're going to then put it on top of the seat so that the microphone faces up towards the ceiling. About two feet down the line, you're gonna find this. This is the set button as well as the on off button. When you're done, you're gonna be able to have with and without so that you can hear the difference. It's also gonna be used for programming the amplifier. Taking a closer look at the instructions. Set the key amplifier gain both one and two to their minimum settings. Turn them all the way down. You're gonna set the gains up in the end. I'll close the car windows, turn off the engine, turn off the air conditioning, install the microphone on the top of the driver's side headrest just like we did. Make sure the microphone faces up, pointing straight as possible to the roof. In most cases, the bi -amp mode switch would be off. And in this case, it is because we're doing front and rear. Start the pink noise. If you don't have a pink noise track, you can go to kicker.com and download it there. If you have a pink noise already, feel free to use whichever one you like. Set the pink noise volume to a level above conversational, slightly loud, using your audio source's volume control, the head unit. Begin the audio setup by quickly pressing the key activation button. Once the slides you will hear repeated tones beep 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 which indicates that you must exit the vehicle and close the doors you will have 10 seconds until the process begins beeps and noises during the key auto setup can be loud for your safety please do not sit in the vehicle this is a big duh moment don't sit in the car once the auto setup is complete you will hear happy music for the successful setup you may quickly press the key button to turn it on and off which will demonstrate in the end if the auto setup fails you will hear sad music boo-hoo just like they said roll up the windows make sure all the doors are closed make sure if your car auto locks you have an extra key or something for pink noise i'll be using the test and tune app they have a mono pink noise i almost forgot all the speakers that are not connected to the amplifier need to be turned off if you are using it as just a front stage only make sure you fade the outputs just to the front if you have a subwoofer in the car make sure it is off Start your track. That's your beeping, you got 10 seconds. Hit on lock a couple times. Make sure you do this part in a quiet area because it's a microphone. You don't want it to hear a bunch of like fire trucks and stuff going by or people talking or phones ringing. That's another thing. If you are using your phone like I am, make sure you put it in nighttime mode so that it doesn't ring or get a text message while you're using it because you'll have to start over and it's a pain. Right, Fernando? Exactly. And that is our happy noise. Turn the volume down. Before you do anything else, turn the volume down. Then hit your button. The reason why you want to do that is because as soon as you hit this, the pink noise is going to shoot back up and be loud and crazy and ugh. With this step now done, it's time to set up the gains on the amplifier. If you head over to kicker.com, they do have test tones that you can use for setting your gain. I like to download their track for the key lock. It's a signed sweep, so it starts at a low frequency and goes up to high frequency, and it sweeps back and forth. Instead of just downloading like a thousand hertz test tone or 250 hertz or something like that, that could potentially damage the speakers, this is quick and it allows you to adjust very efficiently without blowing your speakers. And this is what it sounds like. So if you hear it going up and down, and on the side of the amplifier where the two peak light indicators were, you just keep adjusting the gain until that light doesn't come on anymore. All right, it's five watts more per channel, which 
If you can hear the difference between 45 and 50, I'd be really impressed because it's it's not a lot of power. Most people aren't gonna be able to pick up on that. And I honestly didn't think we'd be able to. Sounds about the same volume. Right. Where the difference is, is in the little details. The kicker key had a great ability of, of creating a, an amazing center image and moving the soundstage up off of the, this lower area down here. But now, some of the finer details you weren't really hearing before, and I say that only because we're hearing them now, are really starting to shine through. It's an amazing product. The whole thing is just pretty revolutionary. And this version of it is definitely a better version than the predecessor. I'm not saying run out and go buy one of these if you got a, a 180.4, but if you're thinking about doing something like this, you won't be disappointed. I mean, we were blown away on the first video, which if you haven't seen us, which we really get deep into the installation portion of it, I'll link to that in the show notes so that if anyone needs to know how to do the full installation, you can find it there. This updated version of it, if there was no point in doing it, they wouldn't have done it. And you can definitely hear the little nuances. Would you agree? For me, it's a little bit more vivid. Yeah. Uh, those little things, like you say, it's hard to describe until you hear it, but it is, yeah. It's kind of like when you get a new pair of glasses and you didn't realize how bad your old glasses were. You were happy with them because you could see everything, but then you put them on like, oh God, there was a street sign there? <gasps> oh my gosh, you totally missed that. Yeah, no kidding. Uh. The red light, oops. All right, guys, so to answer your question, is the new key better than the old key? I'm gonna say yes, it definitely is. Fernando. On to the next one, guys. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.